So the power forward position is surprisingly stacked in NBA 2K23. There are so many ways you can go, like running a center power forward like a Jalen Duran. You can run one in a good token where if you happen to get him like a James Worthy or a Jermaine O'Neal who are just overall great players. You can go with a bruiser like an Elton Brand, a Zach Randolph, or even the recently released Zion Williamson to just use their Hall of Fame bully badges to get inside and dominate. And there's a Blake Griffin who has that Hall of Fame bully badge as well as the ability to spread the floor with the three point shot while also sacrificing defense. Or you can go full on kind of perimeter stretch forward defender and go for a Jeremy Sohan or an AK. Or you can just say feck defense and go out there with Paolo Banquero and just put up buckets on people. There are so many different ways to play that power forward position. So I decided to take the almost impossible task of ranking them all, especially because of play styles in these tiers. So we've got S tier who I believe are the five best players at that position. We got great tier who I think are legitimately great cards that you could easily use at any level, including competitive. Good cards, and I mean genuine good cards. Cards that I would strongly suggest using for people. If you can get these cards and you don't have cards in the higher tier, I strongly suggest using the guys in good. And there's usual, but meh, cards that do have some big flaws, but are actually pretty decent. And almost all of these cards are pretty decent. And there's worthless. A couple of players at the end of the tier list that I just feel that using them are going, you're gonna handicap yourself. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Now let's get on to the list. So obviously these are the players that we have got and the first up in the power forward position is gonna be Joakim Noah. So Noah is basically gonna be used as like this big power forward. I don't think anyone's really gonna like, I don't really see many people use him there. He's mainly gonna be a center. A guy can't shoot the ball, but he plays really good defense. In general, that's not, he's not bad if you just wanna cheese with height, but I'm gonna put him in good. As far as centers go, he's very good. As far as power forwards go, I don't think he's the greatest player in the world, if we're being honest. But he's really, he'll be high in the center tier list tomorrow. Then we got Odom. Now, Odom has a really inconsistent release. Chetty Osman up base, Donovan Mitchell up there, decent dribbling. He, he plays lanes really well. He's all around flawless player. The guy's got no flaws whatsoever. And just as a card in general, I like him. Like, I got really lucky to get him. I was like one of the very, very few people in the world to get this dude as a, like, um, wheel reward. I'm one of the very few, but he doesn't even start power forward for me. I'm going to have to put him in great. Like, he doesn't start for me. Jeremy Sohan plays over him and Giannis Antetokounmpo plays over him. So like, it's not like I don't like him, but I don't think he's spectacular. And when it comes to Duran, Duran's problem is just that he can't shoot. He's a decent defender. He's not even as good as Noah. His height is okay. He is a monster on the board. His jumper isn't even that bad, to be honest. Um, Duran is just... It's just, it's that non-shooting factor again. He's not quite as good as a Noah. I'm gonna put him below. I'm gonna put him in good, but I do think he's very, very solid. But I don't think he's spectacular. Now we got a guy next who might just be in the top five. It's Jeremy Sohan. So I don't care that his release says slow. It's such a good release. His dribbling is not great. His ability on defense, his rebounding, and his player build are absolutely elite. His dunking is really good. His shooting, 73-3 ball, the guy is chick. I'm telling you, I don't know quite if I can put him up there. I don't know quite if I can put him up there in S tier, but he's way better than Odom. The guy is way better than Lamar Odom. He has to at least go into there. He has to at least go into there. But one player that is, in fact, going into the top five is a guy that's in like every squad, and it's Paolo Banquero. So what Banquero gives you is a super quick release. Jordan dribble style. He can move better than any center. He offers you more offense. He offers you no defense whatsoever. His block is pretty good, and his, but his interior is low. He will, unless you manually get a block with him, the ball is going through him and someone is scoring on him. Like the amount of layups I've scored, people just trying to use Paolo Banquero as a normal player. He's probably might be the worst player up here in S tier when it's all said and done. But I think Paolo Banquero belongs in there. He is a superb, superb player. And we got Alonzo Mourning. So Alonzo Mourning, 85 speed, 85 acceleration. He does come with gold bully. He's got a release that's not even that bad. Joel Embiid dribble style. His post game is nice. His defense is really, really good. Mm. I might have to move Bancaro down. Because if we're being completely honest, Alonzo Mourning is better than Paolo Bancaro. Bancaro is really freaking good, but Alonzo Mourning is better. Alonzo Mourning is definitely better. And that was just a card that I thought I would love and I don't like. And it's AK. I don't like his release. 
This base 29 type release is not great. His defense and stuff is nice. Again, don't get me wrong, his defense is pretty good. He's, def he's a decent post defender, a great perimeter defender. Definitely better at small forward. Half clamps. But offensively, for me, he's like a way worse so on. So if you ask me who do I prefer, my answer is so on. He's definitely better than Odom. I prefer so on to AK-47. I know some people hate so on. I know Ty hates um He hates so on, but I like him. So I'm going to put him here. Jameson might just be him. 93 ball. A pretty decent release. It's not a great release. Brook Lopez's release is fine. But he's coming to good over. He's got half bully. Really good stats in general. Great shooting badges. I'm solid defender. Not a great defender, but a solid defender with 92 rebounding. Now, this might just be the second best power forward in the game. He's going up in S tier, and I'm moving Bancaro down because I know for a fact there are guys that I, I want to pair over Bancaro, but he's going to go there. Then we've got an interesting one, and it's Ben Wallace. So, what Ben Wallace basically is, is a more athletic Jalen Duran and. Uh, Joakim Noah, like 83 laterals, pretty good. 95 offense, 95 defense, rebounds, really good. His defense is good. He plays no real offense, but the goal bully means he does get some good animations, I guess, and get some open layups. He's definitely better than these, probably not as good as Odom. I'll put him in great. I put him in great. He might get um, get moved up, but maybe not. Then we have Bill Carter, and people were cheesing with him early in the game of power forward, so I'm going to put him on this list. He has 25 perimeter defense, 75 interior. And the big thing is the dude comes at 51 block and 69 defense rebound. People cheesed with him, but he was such a liability. I don't understand why people are cheesing with him and why people continue to cheese with him, but he was not good. He was not good at all, lads. Next, we've got probably an S tier player and it's Blake Griffin. So Blake Griffin's got that half bully badge. He's got Blake base on normal, normal dribble style. He's also got like good speed. His defense is not great, but it's better than Bangaro's in-game. Trust me, in-game, it's a lot better than Bangaro's. He rebounds well. He handles the ball pretty well for a big man. He's going to run down the floor. He's going to dunk on everybody. Balake Griffin is going to S tier. I'm also going to move Ben Wallace down a tier because I do think that we've got a lot of really, really good players left on this list. And yeah, he's going to go here. So now you got Buggy, and I don't like Buggy Cousins. And let me explain why. Boogie's slow. I don't like his jump shot. Even though some people love his jump shot. Boogie's slow and plays no defense. That's basically it. He's slow, plays no defense, and I can't shoot with him. I'm not going to go as far as to put DeMarcus Cousins even in usable, but meh. Because I do think he belongs in this good tier, but I'm putting him below, I'm putting him lowest to this good tier. I think he's a fine card. He's perfectly, perfectly fine. So then we got... This is a card that a lot of people are really high on. It's Elton Brand. He's 86 speed. The dude can't shoot. But the way the game is played right now, he comes with half bully and half back down punisher and half masher. You get the ball with Elton Brand. He can actually move a little bit with that 80 ball handle, 76 speed ball. You can get him into this area right here and just start mashing with him. He's actually really good. Defensively, he's good. Athleticism, he's good. Outside of like worthy, when we're looking at that um, Pacific tier, he probably is the best. Elton Brand, I'm not putting him in S, I'm putting him ahead of Bancara, was the best in great tier. He's actually a really good player. Then we've got Giannis Antetokounmpo. So Giannis, defensively immaculate. Perfect defensive stats. It doesn't matter that steer rating is 41, he gets so many of them. Great block ratings, great just defensive animations. He can hit a, an occasional wide open jumper. His dribbling is okay. His behind the back is really good, whatever it is. Steph Curry's. Yeah, that's Steph Curry's probably best one I've used this year, if we're being honest, as far as behind the backs go. And I think with Giannis out to the combo, I'm going to move him to here. Move Odom down into good. Because again, I am not as big of a fan of Odom as most people, if we are being honest. I'm not as big of a fan of him. Horace Grant, like he does come with Silver Bully, I guess. Decent lateral quickness, decent defense, and a half decent mid-range shot. Horace Grant is going to be the first player in usable, but meh. I don't think Horace Grant is a bad card. I just don't think Horace Grant is a great card. I've used him. I think he's fine. I think he is objectively fine. Like, you can just about use him. Worthy, though, might be the best power forward in the game. He's got half body, a little bit lower range than Jameson, but a better release than Jameson. He's got everything on defense. Got half claim, Horace. He's wide open. He'll hit shots. 
goal catch and shoot, unbelievable on defense, and um, better player build than Jameson. And in general, it's just going to be a freaking beast. So Worthy get to the very top of this tier. I actually really do rate James Worthy. I'm surprised, but I do really like him. Then we got Jason Tatum. And Jason Tatum releases so chick. His perimeter defense is really, really nice. But this is a power forward list. And with these terrible rebounding, the terrible interior defense, he's not a very good power forward. You can kind of use him a power forward. I mean, you can kind of use him. But that's really it. Like, I wish I could say he's better, but he's really not. He's really not. Jermaine O'Neal, half bully, 83 speed acceleration, 86 ball handle, 9 or 73 three point, bad dribble style, but Kelton Johnson release, which is fine. Um, good perimeter defense, great interior defense, really, really good um, playmaking bad for a big man. You probably need to give him quick first step and maybe like interceptor or something. But Jermaine O'Neal, does he. Is he the last S tier player on this list? I might have to move Alonzo Mourning down because Randy Nails probably goes like here. Alonzo Mourning's going down to great. Does Blake have to go down now? No, I Blake. Blake just about keeps his spot. I Blake just about keeps his spot in S tier. I'm going to keep the last S tier player till the very end, but. He just about keeps the spot. Then we've got this next dude. If you got him, he is a beast. Julius Randle. Good offense, no real defense, but like half bully and a pretty okay release, pro dribble style. And just in general, just a really, really good card. So like Randle's going up into this tier as well. I'm going to have to move him to here. Can we... Him down and him. No, 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 we've got better players there. Then we've Yanis down, AK down. I think so on just about keeps the spot in great. I think so on just about keeps the spot in great there. Like we've got so many elite players. Kevin Durant is next. A really good shooter, but his release is slow. His release is really slow. Actually, a pretty good interior player. His rebounding actually feels okay in game. His release just, just so damn slow. That's the only issue with Kevin Durant is he never misses though. I'm gonna put Kevin Durant below Odom in this good category and put him there. I think he's a solid, solid player. Then at power forward, we have Kevin Love. And the issue with Kevin Love is he just gets run around. He just gets run around. Like you might say, oh, Kevin Love is the best pop pick and popper in the game. And maybe you're right. But like 87 three ball, good release. Problem is, like, if I just want to run a popper, I'll run anybody. I'll run Kiki Vandaway. He's in this tier. I'm gonna move both of these guys down. He belongs just a bit better than Duran, a power forward, but I don't think he's that great, to be honest. And um, we got Kiki Vandaway. Now, Kiki Vandaway is the lowest of usable, but meh, he's a lot of. He's one of your very few cheap auction out stretch for us not great absolute chicken though absolute chicken man though so he's at the very bottom of usable but meh he's probably worse than tatum but he's not unusable lafonso ellis no real three ball sure he's got a little bit of speed a little bit of defense but from from using lafonso ellis he's really really struggled in general i think he's a fine card um, if you're playing offline and that's really it, he's not going to bring much to the table online. Pau Gasol, 64 speed, 62 acceleration, much better at center. Um, no perimeter defense. He gets ran around again. Not as bad as Kevin Love, but he does get ran around quite a lot. Um, he got, does have the length to kind of catch up to that. He's in that, he's in the good tier. I'm going to put him ahead of Durant. Yeah, I'm going to put him like here. Blow out him ahead of Durant. And it's probably a fair spot for him. Then there's a guy that I thought was actually going to be kind of him when the game came out. It's Paul Millsap. He normally is really good in 2K. Give him 60 speed and a 63 ball. Sure, his defense is pretty okay. But he's not really good at anything. His release isn't terrible though. Paul Millsap release is kind of slow, but it's not terrible. I'm putting him like top of worthless. Top of worthless. 
And then we got the guy who does not miss despite having a 53 ball. 57 three ball. And I'm not even like, if you ever play against AI Paul Silas, he will chuck threes. His, what's his three point dance? He will shoot threes every single possession. 35, that's enough that he will chuck threes when he's when he uses CPU and he will never miss. His defense is immaculate, uh, perimeter or interior. His jump shot is incredible. It's Draymond when he eases releases to green in the game. He's definitely not bottom tier, but he's also like just better than Tatum. Maybe Horace Grant. I'll put him like here. I'll put him like here. I think that's where he belongs. We got Richard Lewis, who is just a popper. He'll rebound medio at a mediocre rate. He's like a way, way better popper. He can move a lot better than Kevin Love. He's gonna struggle against interiors or inside bigs a little bit. He's not the greatest player in the world, but he is maybe one of the best poppers in the game at power forward. He's in that second tier, but I'm actually gonna put him below so on. I'm gonna put him at the bottom of that second tier. Then there's a guy that I wish was better than he was in 3D guy. I think I'm a 67 three ball and 70 speed and no defense. His release is chick. Don't get me wrong, his release is absolutely chick. Uh, if he's open, he'll hit. But he is going up below. He's going bottom of worthless, if we're being honest. I wish I could put him higher, but he is right now an absolute garbage man. He is a garbage man. Scotty Barnes is a good card. Good rebounding, really good defense, really decent three ball, 85 speed. His own release, Michael Jordan dribble style. He's basically just right-handed Lamar Odom. I have him one spot behind Lamar Odom because Lamar Odom clears in terms of stats and he's also two inches taller. I know his wingspan shorter, but he is bigger in game and has three extra, has two extra half badges. Um, the issue with Scotty Barnes is the same. He is tough to green with consistently. You can green five shots in a row with him and then you can go and miss five shots in a row with him. It is tough to do that consistently, but it happens like he is not a bad player at all. Scotty Barnes is a beast. X-Man, however, is a player that I actually prefer to both Scotty Barnes and um, Lamar Odom. And his just stats, other than three-pointer, are some of the best for a power forward in the game. They are some of the best. He comes with Silver Bully, and his release is so easy to green that I'm like, you know what? He will hit shots. He'll play unbelievable defense. He's got to go high on this list. And I'm actually putting him ahead of Giannis Antetokounm. I'm going to put him below Giannis because I don't use him over Giannis, but he's better than Lamar Odom for me. Like, maybe it's just... Ugh, I just hate Odom. I just, I just hated Odom today. You know what? I'm putting Odom as, like, here. He'll, he'll go with the great. I'm just... After playing a few games of Odom and he sold me badly today, but Odom has been really, really good for me. So, in general... Yeah, let's put Odom there. Zebo, Zebo is like a slower um, Elton Brand. He's a bully though. He's an absolute bully. He has good lateral quickness. He can play that position. The way the game is played this year, he's got to go up there with Elton Brand. He is an absolute bully. And speaking of bullies, the next three players are going to be Zion Williamson. So Zion Williamson's um, Amethyst is a scrub. He is a scrub. I don't care that he's one half badge when he comes a silver bully. 82 speed, 82 acceleration, no defense whatsoever. He doesn't get the crazy block animations. He's six foot six. He is a scrub. This card grows to six foot seven, gets the crazy block animations. Not too much better stats wise, but a little boost to the three point shot, a little boost to the defense, and it makes the world a difference. That's the same with this one. This one gets half bully, way better speed, a little boost to the defense, but for me, um, the this ion is awful like put him behind tatum get him ahead of van away can do you go with me i'm gonna go here and like here with these ions i'll go here and here oh, ak belongs up here doesn't he ak just does so i'm gonna go like here and here with the two Zions. I think that's probably the best spot, like top of good and in the middle of great tier for the Zions. So we get Tony Kukoc. We get Tony Kukoc, the second to last player. 75 speed, 75 acceleration, 78 three ball. Does not matter, do does not miss. That release is so chick, that Tony Kukoc release. His defense is non-existent. He's actually a really nice player. In general, I'll put him in like the end of, no, if I've got these dudes in usable, meh. 
I gotta put him, he's like a head of Silas. He's in use, but meh, but he's like a head of Silas. He's in here, this tier right here. And that's probably the fairest spot to put him. And then the last player I'm actually putting into S tier is going to be Kevin McHale. He's just got a seven foot 11 wingspan. He doesn't have a bully, which is a bit unfortunate, but he's just got that speed. He's got that interior defense. He's got that height. He's got that half interceptor, which even with a low steel range, that half interceptor is just the most OP defense badge in the game. He can shoot the three balls. Release isn't that bad. The last S tier player in a close one. Like, I'm going to put Mikhail like here. It's so close between Mikhail, Zebo, Brand, and Morning. Which one of these guys I want to put in for that last spot. And even Blake is in that conversation. I think Worthy, Jermaine O'Neal, and Jameson are going to be in there. And he's tough for the rest of these. And honestly, for the rest of these guys in great tier, it's tough as well because. The half bully badge is just so important. And one, two, three, four of these guys have half bully. Um, someone like an Odom is just very inconsistent for me. Um, but a Z this Zion can be effective. Yanis plays over Odom for me right now, but I literally only made that decision today, so it's a tough one. But yeah, that's pretty much it. This is only at the power four position. This is my final tier list. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.